Hello friends, welcome to second video on newly introduced Microsoft Fabric. Let's have a quick recap of what we did in the intro video and in this video we will explore loading of the data to the data warehouse and the lake house and how it all pans out, how the SQL plays a role in, in all this and how we can connect it with the Power BI. Let's get to Power BI service and take a look. So in previous video, we created a, a lake house. When we created a lake house, it automatically created a SQL endpoint for that against which we can write a SQL statements, which is awesome. We haven't loaded any data in the lake house yet. And it automatically also created a data set, which is the default data set in for that lake house. Um, and we created one data warehouse and uh, also when we created a data warehouse, it automatically created a data set for that warehouse. In the data warehouse, we loaded the sample data, which was already available in Power BI service and we were able to run the SQL statement against that data warehouse. Do check out the first video. First, we are going to load a table in lake house and see how does that all works. Let's first look at the lake house, how we can load data to a lake house. So if I go to my lake house, so there are many ways that how you can um, load the data. So a couple of things to note here, there's a new data flow gen two, that's how you can load, I guess that's what how you can get the data in lake house. Open notebook, again, this is not my domain shortcut, we will explain in the upcoming videos. So let's uh, look into the new data flow gen two, what that is, uh, because this seems really, really interesting. So let's start with the new data flow gen two. Here we are, uh, data flow gen two, it is sim it's more or less the same data flow we are using today, which is also known as Power Query Online. Uh, we're gonna see what is difference in data flow gen two compared to uh, data flow gen 1 or the one which we are using right now. In Dataflow gen 2, I connected to one Excel file from my OneDrive and uh, just added the step, uh, changed the column type and all that fun stuff and then I gave a name it my stock. Now as we saw that you can uh, on the lake house when we're lake house that you can get data from Dataflow gen 2. So that's why we are here. What we have here is this is the new thing in data flow gen two. You can actually export this data to the lake house, which is awesome news and I will tell you why. And here if I go add data destination, it means we can actually from the data flow, push the data to the SQL database, data explorer custo, uh, again, I don't use that. And the option we are interested in lake house. So we can actually push the data to the lake house. So whatever the data transformation we are doing in data flow gen two, the output of this can be written as a table in the lake house and other sources as well. I guess these destination over time will uh, change or there will be low more destination, but I know we are interested in lake house. So I'm gonna select lake house. And of course, it's uh, saying which lake house, create new connection. And uh, I'm gonna go to, we don't need a gateway. So switch account, this is good. And next, I guess you cannot create more than one connection, same cloud, you instead your existing connection, okay. So lake house none, what does this mean? Added connection, sign in. Okay, next. Okay, so we created the connection and then it shows all of my workspaces here, but we are interested in fab test. That's the one we want. And then uh, it has a data flows staging lake house. Uh, I don't know what that is that I guess it creates uh, under the hood. Uh, and also fab test lake house. 
then you can give the name of the table here and uh, also i think it says the destination new table or the existing table because this is a new table so i guess we will go with the new table and go next okay so here it automatically map the column so what is the column in our source which is data flow and what the column will be in destination some of this it automatically gave the names uh, but some it with, they came with an exclamation. What is that? Column name cannot space new lines and da da da. So, okay. So, we can have some column names. We can have fix it. Let's see what it does. Okay. It automatically changed those columns, um, whatever the valid column name supposed to be at the destination. This is great. So, in case we cannot have uh, invalid column names. So, again, update method is replaced and I guess the other option will be append. So whether if there is an existing table and whenever this data flow runs and it appends the data, uh, that's what our option will be. Uh, we will look into the upcoming videos how that will be ha uh, handful, useful. Uh, but right now we're gonna go replace because we're just doing very basic stuff right now. Save settings. Okay, perfect. So what we did, we connected to a Excel sheet from OneDrive we did the transformation of the data and then we did the data destination is a lake house and we told where which lake house it should go to and that's pretty much what we did and now let's um, uh, publish it okay so we have a data flow one here uh, in our workspace and it's still spinning i guess it is validating again in data flow gen uh, the current one which we're using when you save it validate and takes a lot of time the other thing what i found here is as soon as you say publish uh, when you done your transformation it just closes that um, data flow window and then comes here and i think after that you don't have to wait for it to go through all the validation process i think it saves it and then it do the validation process so now i think it has finished doing that well, let's change its name to uh, Data Flow Lake House. Okay, save. All right. So now we have a data flow where we said the destination will be the lake house. And let's, uh, nothing happened in the lake house right now. I guess uh, we have to. Uh, uh, run the refresh on it. So where did it go? So here it is data flow lake house and click refresh now Okay, so it finished refreshing and uh, uh, Unfortunately, it took quite a long time uh, for it to run So uh, in the re uh, refresh window look um, different now with the gen 2 um, So it succeeded and the duration was two minutes seven cent, uh, seconds so basically for once one table reading the data from um, a excel sheet uh, from one drive with the four or five simple transformation step and then the destination was lake house and it took around two minutes that's quite a lot there's a good stuff here so what it says is tables my stock which is succeeded so i think if we have a lot more tables in in our data flow, it will tell which one failed, which one succeeded, which is great, easy to see here. Previously, you have to download the CSV file and look into that. And also other activity did is it's uh, have another uh, event here, write to database table from and all that fun stuff. So that succeeded as well. So based on this refresh, it looks like the data has been written in the lake house. So let's take a look. So if we go to the lake house here and we see unidentified uh, I guess that's uh, the folder I'm not sure what does this means but let's refresh it here it, it looks like a table called my stock that's what we did and it has all the columns here now can I write a SQL query against this uh, okay here is the preview what about if I want to write a SQL query I guess I can open this in a notebook for the people who are um, notebook uh, uses um, uh, Python and those languages. I'm not using those. So what I need to do is for the purpose of because I am a SQL guy, 
I can go to the corner here and I can go to the lake house and go to the SQL endpoint, right? This is great. I loaded the data from data flow gen to destination lake house and it created a table for me, which is a Delta tables. And, uh, and but I have the opportunity to write a SQL query. So I switch to the SQL endpoint. Now, once I go to the SQL endpoint, I can write my again, new SQL query. So let's say select star from um, my stock. Will it work? Run. Perfect. Okay, here you go. And I can, of course, give my um, where condition as well. Where currency is equal to, let's say, USD. I have to use a SQL syntax. Run. Okay. So this is great. Um, I loaded the data from the Excel sheet to your table. Now that's that's awesome. So my SQL knowledge stays with me. What I've spent using it for so many years, I can uh, use it here. And uh, let's go back to Lake House. And one more thing, if we go to Fab Test Lake House, I saw one thing here. It has a new Power BI data set. We can create a new Power BI data set again. As I said it creates a default data set but we, it, we can also create our own data set as well. And uh, one other thing I wanna see here is the default data set, if we go there, does this my table shows up in that automatically? The one which we just created, so, okay. Here you go. So the default data set automatically has loaded the my stock table in there. So if I just try to, now it should be, uh, it will create a paginated report. I should be able to see the view here. And uh, okay, so that looks great. So, so the data is there. So basically the data I loaded in the warehouse, uh, in the lake house from data flow gen two and, uh, and the destination was lake house. And then I was able to write my own SQL query against that. And uh, also, I that table was available in the in, in the power default data set. In the upcoming video, we will look into how to load data into warehouse. In this video, we saw how to load data in a, a simple like using data flow gen 2. In the next video, we will look how to load data into um, a warehouse and can we what we can use there to load the data into the warehouse stay tuned for the upcoming videos do subscribe and there will be a lot more basic videos coming up on microsoft fabric i will share and we will look into these things together as i learn all this stuff stay tuned thanks for watching have a good day bye for now thank you